Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video 18. We're in chapter 4, part 5. We're talking about linear regression. And so last time we talked about the least squares criterion. We um, talked about the uh, least squares line, and we gave the equation for that. And if you have the equation, y hat equals uh, a plus bx, it's easy to plot points by plugging in values of x. Um, and we talked about how to calculate the slope and the intercept for the least squares line. So we're going to finish up this section on linear regression in this video. And we're going to talk about um, predicting a value of y, understanding the difference between, well, we talked about that last time. And we're also going to uh, determine unexplained and explained error using the coefficient of variation. So we were working with a example from last time. This is talking about predicting the uh, wolf population uh, based on the caribou population in Denali National Park in Alaska. And we had gotten through calculating the correlation coefficient as 0.915. And so our next step that we need to do is we need to test for is R statistically significant and unless we state otherwise use alpha equals 0.05. This is just a standard uh, uh, convention that we use, alpha equals 0.05, which makes our confidence level 95%, which is high. Okay. So we have to check this statement here to determine if it is statistically significant. If this statement is true, then R is statistically significant. So I have a value of 0.915. If I take the absolute value of that, I get that number because the absolute value just takes away a negative. I didn't have a negative, so it stays. So now n is 7. I want to go over to my table here, and I look for n equals 7 here, and it says alpha equals 0.05, so I'm looking in the first column, and I find that my table or critical value is 0.75. So I come back here, and I write down 0.75. And so, is 0.915 greater than 0.75? And I could put a zero behind that. And yes, it is. So, here's our sentence. Here's our conclusion sentence. Anytime you do the test, I want you to write this sentence. There does exist sufficient evidence to conclude that a linear relationship between the caribou population and the wolf population in the Denali National Park of Alaska exists at a confidence level, remember here we took 1 minus alpha times 100%. So alpha was 0 0.05, so 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.95, and that's the same thing as 95%. Which was tested with a simple random sample of n equals 7 years. In this case, they sampled uh, previous years. All right. So since this is, since there does exist a sufficient evidence, remember if R was too small, we'd say there does not exist sufficient evidence and everything else would be the same. So the only thing that changes is whether this is does or does not. Okay, so since it is significant, we will proceed with linear regression. That's why we chose this example. So now we want our regression equation, our least squares line. So... I've done this both ways. Here, I've already got this information from before. Here are my values for the sum of xy, sum of x squared, sum of y squared, sum of y, sum of x, all over there. So I'm going to use those. In fact, remember I told you that we could use the uh, numerator. This is the same as the numerator of the correlation coefficient. And here, look at this. This is the same as the denominator of b. So I'm going to use this 1420 and that 2271. So I can just put them in here, and then I get this number, and I round, I'm round. i going to round it to two decimal places in this problem. Or I can calculate it with r times s sub y over s sub x, but I can't, I have to use all the decimal places to get the same number. And now I'm going to calculate A, Y bar minus BX, so I plug in those numbers. Now here I did not round. Your book does round, and so they get a different number here. I think it's 22.36 or something like that, so a little bit different. Um, 
So I'm going to use these unrounded, I'm going to use no error here. I'm going to do it the way we're supposed to. And then I get 22.39. And so this is my least squares uh, regression equation, least squares line or regression equation. And these are going to be for, this is going to be for predicting values between 17 and 34. How did I get that? I went up to my data, which I always put in order from the, the axis. And so the smallest value is 17, and the largest is 34. So I wouldn't want to predict any values outside of that using any x values outside of that. Okay. So now, let's see. All right. So now I want to interpret the slope. Remember, look back at your equation or your formula or your sentence here that I've given you. And so for every increase of one unit of caribou, but the units were in hundreds, so this is 100 caribou. The wolf population increases because B is what? It's positive um, 1.6. It's not negative, so this will be an increase by, here's B, 1.6, and I could put a zero there, wolves, but remember it's on average. Or I could say for every increase of one caribou, the wolf population increases by 0.016. I have to divide then. So that's why we try to use this. It just turns out that the units were 100 of 100 caribou. So it's a little strange, this example, and I apologize. But uh, think about it, and I think it'll make sense. Interpret the intercept. So uh, zero caribou does make sense. So, uh, um, but... We don't have any x values near zero. So really, it doesn't make sense for us to interpret this at this point. Um, but I'm going to for practice only. Okay. So on average, when there are no caribou, the wolf population is approximately this. So this is the sentence that I gave you. On average, when there are zero units of whatever we're talking about in x, then the y uh, variable is approximately, and this is A, 22.39. Okay. So this would say that there are 22 wolves without any caribou. So um, we, we may not find that realistic if that's what they primarily eat. Okay. So the mean points. Let's talk about, and those are not points that are mean to you. They're the averages. So x bar and y bar. So if I plug in x bar here, I get a value that's very, very close to y bar, and the difference is in rounding error. Okay. So um, the points x bar, y bar, they are on the line. Okay. They are on the line. Prediction. What if I want to know um, about the situation? How many wolves can I expect to have or predict to have? If there are 3,200 caribou, remember that the, these are in hundreds. So if x is 32, then I plug in 32 into my regression equation, and I get 73.59 or 73.6 wolves. Okay, so we've just predicted uh, the number of wolves uh, if x is 3,200 caribou. But don't put 3,200 in here, put 32. Because remember, the units are, are in hundreds, but we just put the 32 in there. Okay. The coefficient of determination. Let's talk about, I'm going to blow this up a little bit. Zoom in. And we have our regression line here. If I can draw across it, apparently I can't. So there's our regression line. And um, we have this point this real point. Now, what I've done is I've plotted x bar, y bar. That's this point here, right there. Okay. But let's say we have this other point, y. And then I have y hat. This is y up there. This is y hat here. Whoops. That's not very neat. y hat. So the difference, y minus y hat, this is the residual. And then I have from the line, so that's from the point to the line, then I have from the line to y bar, y hat minus y bar, and then the total amount of variation here is from y to y bar. Remember, if we calculate 
the standard deviation of y, we talk about the sum of y minus y bar squared over n minus 1. Okay? So y minus y bar is our total variation. It turns out that the amount of variation that is explained by our regression equation or model is the residual. The unexplained variation is right here, and of course this is the total. So uh, we want to know the percent explained, so I need to come over here. So explained is the residual. Unexplained is y hat minus y bar. If I add these two together, I get the total variation. This is variation. And I get y, I, I put this, I put that, I add them together. The y hats cancel out. I get y minus y bar for the total. Now the percent explained is the explained divided by the total. That's the residual divided by y minus y bar. Conveniently, very nicely, it turns out that this is the same as r squared. So that makes it real easy. Once we have r, we have r squared, of course. We just square it. And this is called the coefficient of determination. It's the percent of total variation uh, in y that is explained by the regression line, or we can call it the regression model. And higher is better. The more that explained, the better the fit is. Okay? So we want to find the coefficient of determination for our sample. So um, it's okay to round r here and square it. It's, it's not going to be very different to three decimal places, and we only care about three decimal places. In either case, we get 0.837, and that means that here's our interpretation. 83.7%, so this is 83.7%, same thing, different units of the variation in our response variable, that's the y, and that's the caribou population size, is explained by the regression line, or the regression model, whichever you want to say. Okay, So that's the interpretation. Another interpretation we can make is how much is unexplained. Well, we take this explained amount from 100 and its percent, and we get 16.3% of the variation in y is not explained or is unexplained. Okay. So that is linear regression, pretty much in a nutshell, the basics of it, which is what our book covers, just the basics. I hope that's been helpful, and um, remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight of the date that's listed on the course calendar. These are your notes, so make them neat for you. Update your formula sheet with any formulas we went over, especially the coefficient of determination, and we will see you next time.